Hi chemists, welcome to your choice on your unit menu covalent compounds. This video is all about predicting the shapes of molecules. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the forces of interaction that determine the shape of a molecule and use something called Vesper theory to determine the shape of molecules. Whenever we talk about the shapes of molecules, what we're really talking about is a molecule's geometry. And there's a very simple theory, I know it sounds a little scary, to um, basically explain why our molecules take the shapes that they do. This theory is called Vesper theory for short, and it stands for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion Theory. Basically, this theory says that since electron pairs are negatively charged, Basically, these electrons are going to repel each other because we know negative and negative will repel. And they're going to repel each other to try and get as far away from each other as possible. And this repulsion is what ultimately determines the shape of your molecules. The first shape we're going to discuss is called linear. And just like it sounds like, we're talking about a line. So you could have a scenario where you have two atoms, for example, in the molecule H2. Um, but the more common scenario, I would say, is where you have three atoms. So when you have three atoms, basically the important thing that you really want to zoom in on is the fact that the central atom has no unshared pairs around it or no lone pairs around it. So for example, with carbon dioxide, that's the Lewis structure. You can see that there's no unshared pairs around the carbon. You can see there's right, there's nothing there. And so that's what basically allows these um, oxygen atoms to kind of stick straight out. And so since it is in the shape of a line, you can expect the bond angle to be 180 degrees. The next shape is bent, and that's exactly what it sounds like. Typically, you'll have three atoms where you'll basically have it kind of bent over like you see there. Now, in order to make this bent shape, you have to have these unshared pairs around the central atom. So if you don't have those unshared pairs, then again, there's nothing going to keep it from repelling and kind of forming that um, straight line. So you have to have them there in order to cause it to be bent. You can have one unshared pair or you can have two. An example would be water. So that's the Lewis structure for water. And typically the bond angle um, for water with four electron pairs or what we call electron domains will be approximately 109.5. As you can imagine, if you were to maybe just have one unshared pair, it'd probably be closer to 120. Next up is trigonal planar. So this is where you'll have four atoms. And again, in this case, we're going to look at that central atom. And as soon as you look at the central atom, you can see that it has no unshared pairs. So that's gonna be an indicator if you've got three bonded atoms and no unshared pairs, that's trigonal planar. So an example would be formaldehyde. So that's the Lewis structure. And then as I mentioned before, um, since you have three electron domains or three, unsure, three um, electron regions, that's ultimately going to cause this bond angle to be around 120 degrees. Next up is pyramid, or sometimes it is called trigonal pyramid. And so this is exactly what it sounds like with four atoms. You're going to kind of have this bent over shape. But again, if you're looking at this, notice right now there is no unshared pairs around the central atom. So there has to be an unshared pair on the central atom in order to make it that pyramid shape. An example would be ammonia. So for NH3, that would be the Lewis structure. And the bond angle for this is approximately 109.5. It's actually a little bit less. And you may say, Ms. Raz, why is it less than 109.5? Because it is four electron domains. Well, as it turns out, believe it or not, these unshared pairs actually occupy a larger volume. And so since this occupies a larger volume, it's going to really push these hydrogens downward. And so that's why the bond angle is going to be a little smaller. Our shape for tetrahedral, I always think of tetris. So hopefully if you're thinking about tetris, you're thinking about four. And so in this case, we'll have five atoms and then we'll have the central atom attached to four other atoms. So that's where we're seeing the tetris or the tetra come from. In the central atom, you'll expect to see no unshared pairs. Because remember, if you had an unshared pair there, then that means that that would be the pyramid shaped. But since there's no unshared pairs, this is going to be tetrahedral. 
A very common example would be methane or CH4. And for this one, because there are four electron domains, you would expect to see approximately a bond angle of 109.5. Anytime you have, you know, about four electron domains, and an electron domain is basically just an area where the electrons are located. So, for example, this is a bond. That's considered an electron domain. In the last example, the unshared pair on the central atom is also considered an un a, uh, electron domain. But whenever you have four electron domains, more often than not, the bond angle is going to be very close to 109.5. But as I mentioned, it can vary, especially have, if you have an unshared pair on the central atom. So here's a real quick summary of shapes. So with linear, we said in order for it to be linear, there has to be no unshared pairs on the central atom. For bent, you absolutely have to have those unshared pairs or else it won't be in the bent shape, right? There'll be, if there's no unshared pair here, there'll be nothing pushing this downward, so you've got to have them there. Because remember, it's repulsion theory. For trigonal planar, you would expect to have um, three atoms bonded to a central atom. This one is planar because the molecule is actually flat, um, but you'll have more experience with that a little bit later on. Pyramid is actually kind of looks like a pyramid. You can see it kind of pushes these downward because of that unshared pair. And then finally, tetrahedral, we think Tetris because you have four bonded atoms around it. So hopefully this video helped you with being able to tell the difference between the different types of molecular shapes. Make sure that you have your periodic table handy as you work on some practice problems. Great job today.